everybody, how you doing? How you been? I'll tell you how I'm doing. I'm disappointed. I'm disappointed in She-Hulk. Uh, for a number of reasons. But probably chief among them is that this is a good premise for a show. It's based on a good comic book. I haven't read this much of the She-Hulk comic. From what I've read, I liked it. And it just makes sense that rather than doing a straightforward superhero show about fighting and punching bad guys, doing a court show about all the legal nonsense that goes on with that, it, it, that could be very not only interesting, but funny. I was told this was going to be a comedy, a hilarious ha-ha, the hilarious hijinks of Mrs. She-Hulk running around. This show is not funny. It's, and it's only barely interesting. And we, we're going to talk about this second episode real quick. Don't forget, subscribe to the channel, hit that button down there. And I want to tell you how disappointed I am with She-Hulk. Now, we're two episodes in. And I don't want, I, I'm not even going to say maybe it gets better because you've, you've, you've kind of botched the launch, I think. First episode, if you can get over the extreme feminist angle of it. Some people, I've had arguments with people. I've had a lot of arguments with people. Some people say it's not that big a deal. You know, this is the kind of things women talk about. My opinion was obviously this is over the top. Why is she complaining about men? This isn't fun or funny. Okay, but if you're, if you're like me and you can get past that, I was like, you know what? I'm going to give this second episode a shot. Now, the second episode does thankfully fix the biggest problem with the pilot. The biggest problem with the pilot is she spends all this time arguing with her br uh, cousin Bruce Banner and he says, you can't have it all. You can't be a Hulk and a lawyer. There's going to be uh, different problems that happen there. You're going to run into conflicts. And then the episode ends famously with her beating up a bad guy. And then they play that little song that goes, who's that girl, mama? Which is basically saying, yes, yeah, she can have it all. She can have it all. She can be a lawyer. She can be a Hulk. There's no conflict. I'm like, your pilot is supposed to set up the conflict of the show. What is the central conflict? And the pilot failed to do that. Now, though the pilot failed in its job to communicate what the show is about, now the second episode, fa thankfully, very quickly fixes that hole, okay? And she does end up getting fired from her job for actually the same reason I had uh, said on my Monday Night Griff show. I said uh, they should call a mistrial because she's now saved the jury from a, from a monster woman, and she is a whatever. And when you save the jury and they're indebted to you for saving their lives, well, now, of course, they're going to decide in your favor in the court case. So you have to call a mistrial. Thankfully, the show is smart enough to recognize that was a conflict there, and she gets fired for causing a mistrial despite saving the lives of these people. Which then becomes, she's looking for a job. And again, I'm like, is this show ever going to be funny? Uh, real quick, here, here was one scene I wanted to play where they come, th this, there's like all these opportunities. Me, I'm watching this as a comedian. I'm like, there are opportunities for comedy here and you guys are just letting them fall behind. Let, let's listen in. We go live now to an eyewitness. Can you tell us about what you saw today? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this chick, pretty decent, turned into a Hulk, like, like a chick Hulk. A she Hulk? Exactly. See, that's not funny. That's not funny, really. Uh, a better joke would have been if the newsman went, a uh, She-Hulk? And the guy thought about it, he goes, no, not a, sh no, that's, that sounds dumb as hell. More like a big green, like some, jo there's room for a joke there. That isn't a joke. Like, if you're going to do the little, go to the, uh, you know, court outside the courthouse, crazy guy on the street talking to you, he should have a funny line. And it's not really funny at all. And that's kind of this whole show is a lot of opportunities for what could have been comedy, which are then replaced with like the most boring. Like as I watch these scenes, I think of like first time script writers who aren't comedians who have heard certain jokes before and are kind of borrowing from stuff they've already watched. But that's the thing. None of these jokes are like original or interesting. For instance, she goes to dinner with her parents, and her parents go, oh, don't worry, we've told everyone to not comment on you losing her job, uh, usually losing your job, and then her cousin puts his foot in his mouth. Let's hear that. You don't have to worry about getting fired. I already told everyone, so it won't be awkward. No one's going to bring it up. Hi, everybody. Hi, Chad. You're gonna fire him. Chad! Chad! Chad. So to bring it up. 
I said, don't bring it up. Why would I tell you to bring it up? Sorry, Uncle Mo. She already feels like... I'll say this. This guy's delivery of I told you not to bring it up gets a smile out of me. But ultimately, I'm just waiting for, like, some really good, solid jokes, but these all feel phoned in. And that, to me, is like... These all feel like first rushed drafts of a script when you should have went and hired some comedians, not just, I, I don't know who's in the writer's room. I've been told it's a lot of ladies sitting around, and some ladies are very funny, fine. But you should have brought in some comedians to really punch this thing up. I mean, here I would think this is a great opportunity for some comedy. They even established, she's talking to the abomination. He's behind, you know, a glass cage in case he turns into a giant monster. And yeah, you could have, like, some funny dialogue here. I mean, they even make a little Silence of the Lambs joke, which frankly was such a throwaway little line, but I was like, well, yes, it is a Silence of the Lambs situation. You're dealing with a guy who's potentially crazy. There's there's some opportunity for some comedy here, and uh, here's what they give us. I understand your point, but the parole board's gonna need to know that you feel remorse for your actions to even consider release. Absolutely, I do. See, and I have here, uh, various haikus that I've written oh boy. to each of my victims expressing the sorrow. Oh, you don't have to. If you'd like to experience them. That's okay, I can. My... This is like such Marvel... I guess that's what I guess that's what I want to get to. Marvel movies are already... And Marvel TV shows and whatever, they all have like some element of like, oh, a little joke, little quip, little funny thing, okay? But She-Hulk was supposed to give us more than that. Okay, like, yes, every Marvel project is a little bit jokey and comedic, you know, and it's fine because it moves the action along. But this isn't an action show. This is a comedy. So you can't have these lame, stupid quips. Well, I wrote a haiku for each of my victims. Isn't that hilarious? Haikus. And I'm sure somebody else out there is going, well, that's racist towards the Japanese. What's funny about a haiku? I almost agree with you. There's there's so many opportunities for comedy in a show like this with all sorts of crazy characters from around the Marvel Universe that she could be interacting with and telling jokes, but instead, it's just the same stupid, boring Marvel quips that we get out of every show. There's nothing interesting here. Uh, she meets with her cousin. Her cousin works at Best Buy, and he goes, Yeah, you know, I've been selling these TVs. They all say 4K, but, you know, nobody even knows what 4K is. <laughs> and I'm like... Okay, what th these jokes are just not landing. And I guess that's ultimately what I want to say, is that this is a show that needed, I feel needed more comedians on the writing staff, needs more jokes, needs more of a premise than just, it's. It, what am I watching? This, this episode didn't even go anywhere. It's literally, she gets a new job, she meets a client. Remember when like a TV show, each episode would have it like be like a self-contained story and not just this constant meandering going nowhere type thing. Uh the end of the episode is just she finds out her client is maybe breaking out of prison at night, but that's not like a complete story. We're just spinning our wheels listening to stupid little Marvel quips. Uh it's like watching a bad movie in 20 minute chunks. I don't I don't understand how they're dropping the ball so hard on this show. This feels like it should write itself. Uh, and frankly, I'm just disappointed. Anyway, guys, that's my review of episode two of She-Hulk. I, 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 you know, I, I hate having to give these shows a, well, maybe it'll get better, maybe it'll get better. I'm tired of having to do that. But it feels like every Marvel show, you keep waiting and waiting for something exciting to happen. And then you end up at the end of it and you're like, I don't know, I guess it was something to watch. Like, come on, guys, just hire some really funny guys. There's so many funny guys out there right now making great comedy who really could have made this show work. And instead, I'm just, I'm just falling asleep over here. Don't forget, subscribe to the channel, hit that button. And of course, go to superkiller.org to sign up for the mailing list for my upcoming comic book. I would really appreciate it. It's going to be it's gonna be a lot funnier than this. I'm going to put some actual jokes in it for the love of God. So check out superkiller.org. I love you guys. Take care of yourselves. And uh, She-Hulk, it's not a good show. Not good.